this is the session about CD Engine, not about runtime, as written out there. Um, so it means uh, it's about CD Engine and game engines and Unity and Unreal. And uh, yeah, so uh, me, I'm Pascal Müller. I'm the director of the ESRI R&D Center in Zurich, Switzerland. So uh, for those who don't know, ESRI has uh, development center centers around the world. And uh, in Zurich, we are 55 people. And uh, we develop um, the 3D part of the JavaScript API, I think which you saw in the plenary today. And um, we also um, develop ArcGIS Urban, which is a, a urban planning application on top of the JS API. And we also develop CD Engine and uh, all the game engine related tech. And uh, I'm going to talk about this part today. And uh, so here's the agenda. Um, so first I'm going to just give an overview on game engines in general. Um, and then show some examples what uh, users do uh, with, with game engines and CD Engine. Then the question everybody asks me always, Unity or Unreal, uh, so the two famous game engines. And then afterwards I show how you can basically bring your GIS data into um, these two famous game engines. And then afterwards, um, Outlook and Discussion, um, where we also talk about uh, how it's, what it means to stream data from the WebGIS into a game engine. Um, so kind of outlook a bit, uh, what's the future of game engines and, uh, and GIS and how these, how these two things uh, will work together in the future. So first, uh, I'm super happy that so many people are here. So uh, who, is, uh, who, who was in contact with game engines already? Like, um, I see many, many people. Who used Unity? Most of them. Unreal? A few, okay. Other game engines? <laughs> I know which one. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, okay, cool. So let's start. Um, so first, um, What's a game engine? So the official definition by Wikipedia is uh, that it's a software development environment uh, for creating um, video games, obviously. Um, so it means it's a development environment. So it means you need a developer to build stuff. Um, basically, uh, the idea is that you have all these components, like, of course, a very good render engine. So it means 2D and 3D graphics are rendered uh, at very good uh, quality. Uh, but then you also have other stuff like physics engine, like collision detection, or you have animation tools, or, or, for, or audio, which can be spatially, you can place sources in, in, in 3D space and everything gets rendered for you. Um, you have scripting, scene graph, um, all these tools, APIs, SDKs. So you basically have all these, these pieces and by having these pieces at highest quality and everything should work, should work uh, in real time at interactive rates um, and you can put that together and create pretty good, yeah, video games. So here is a, an, uh, this is the demo reel, the latest demo reel of the Unreal Engine. Um, so, and here you see Especially Unreal is, is focusing a lot on enterprise um, usage. And here you see basically the quality which, which, which they achieve. And it's, as you can see, um, it's really used for everything. But one of the main things is, of course, architectural visualization. So also um, for BIM, for example, BIM to game engines is a whole other story. So here we talk mainly about GIS to game engines, but uh, yeah. And you can see the, the quality you get, this is like, this is like amazing quality. Um, and, and you have this at near real time um, applications. And uh, yeah, here you also see this kind of like, for example, other applications of game engines are, are, are live video effects. Um, where they, for example, have uh, weather channels and all this kind of stuff. For these kind of things, they use game engines. So it's not just games. And this is exactly what the point which I try to make here. Um, game engines are not just for video games anymore. 
Um, they are they are they are getting used more and more also by non-developers. So the tools get more and more simpler. Still, they are um, not so easy to use, but uh, they get simpler. Especially Unity is very has a very um, good learning curve, and uh, and it's it's there to really build experiences. So and this is a bit the difference to GIS. From GIS, we are used to um, to to a tool set of 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 tools which can do everything. So for example, we have line of sight, and you can use line of sight to figure out um, um, sniper positions, or you can figure out uh, um, to to can I see a landmark from here to there, or like so visibility questions of all kinds, and. The difference is a bit with video games. What people do is actually they they typically provide a, an, a let's say a, a company which 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 provides services of video game where they use a game engine. They provide a dedicated user experience, a specific user experience about something. So somebody comes and asks, like, yeah, we have the president visiting, um, and we need to, for example, see all the snipers along sniper positions along the along the route. So they create an experience, uh, an application dedicated for this. So it's not just about uh, putting together some line of sight tools. So, and this is exactly the difference. So what people get is really a very, very nice user experience specific for, for, for this use case. However, um, it's, it's of course, this, this user experience, it always seems like they are very easy to do, but they are not. And of course, you cannot scale that. You cannot do it multiple times. Every time you have to do it, um, yeah, by your own. So what you here see is, uh, is such an experience we create. So this is dedicated to urban planning. This is now a, a virtual reality application. And uh, so I'm, we have afterwards a, a session on VR, on virtual reality and augmented reality. Um, and uh, so I'm not going to talk a lot about this, but game engines are also here for uh, most of the time if you do VR or AR. Um, there are uh, game engines are the basic tool. And what you see here, for example, is this, again, this specific user experience for switching the scenarios of this urban plan. So you can look at different, different scenarios. And then here you can look at, at different light positions. And you can operate this, this, uh, this, this 3D model uh, in a very intuitive way. And then you can also jump in, in VR, you can jump into this, this table and see it. So and this is exactly the kind of thing you can build with game engines, um, quite simple. If you would have to build such a thing from scratch with OpenGL, uh, yeah, it would take you much, much longer, of course. <clears throat> so, now, game engines are here to, to yeah, create interactive experiences, but what you also can do is you can render visualizations. So means that means it's just about creating animations, and this has been done before with uh, with so-called offline renderers. So means the some ray tracing algorithms which uh, which calculated for like one hour per per image, and this is now what game engines are also used for. So means architectural visualization. Uh, that basically means. Every time an architect, um, yeah, or a developer tries to create a project, um, then they need visualization to sell it, uh, to sell it to the public, or to sell it to the developer, or or to the to whoever. And uh, for that, they always have to create nice pictures. There's nothing like nice pictures. And um, and for that, typically, the old school, were, yeah, like 10 years ago, they used ray tracing software where every image took like hours to, to calculate. Now, for example, Unreal Engine, you can, you can calculate these, these images in split seconds. Uh, it's, not like, uh, it's not like interactive, but uh, nearly interactive. And that's why on the Unreal Engine is the fourth most used production renderer. Which is kind of amazing. So it means this real-time thing for games is used for um, is, is more used than this is, is getting like really the most used thing for architectural visualization. Here are some examples. So here you see now this is uh, 
this has been rendered by about three frames per second. So this is of course more than three, also like the, the playback speed is more than three frames, but the rendering time has three frames per second. So it means it took like a, a minute to, to render this, this movie. And uh, what you see here is an is a, is a urban plan which has been created in City Engine. And then you see, um, yeah, the, the, um, the light has been animated here and, and the, the lights go on. Here is another, another one. And this is also typical. The, often when you say game engine, people think it has to look photorealistic. First, this is not so simple to create photorealistic as a kind of people sometimes think they can just take in a 3D model into a game engine and then it looks photorealistic. Not the case. It's actually still like you need to deal with materials and everything. But what you see here is actually more like a, what people develop, especially in the architectural space, is like a visual kind of language to, to um, yeah, uh, tell a story about this design. And uh, so these are typical kind of visualizations. And uh, so here you see, for example, uh, also like you, you can have these assets, these animations, um, so these people walking around or cars or whatever. And you can kind of create an impression about, about, this, about the space which is, which, which is getting built in a very quick way. So tomorrow there's a session on City Engine where I talk about like how this has been can be created in City Engine. Today I just talk a bit about like how you get it into 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 the uh, Unreal Engine. So some examples. This is a, this was one of the first examples we we did. So this is from HOK. HOK is a so I think it's the biggest architectural studio. Um, like they have studios all over the world, and uh, and uh, this is for I think for an extension of Istanbul, like a huge, 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 huge urban plan, where they created uh, some some visualizations on the density and parks of uh, of the plan. And again, so. Everything has been put um, into into the into the engine, and then people can navigate around freely. This is a an example from Devin, uh, so how's Lamin? And uh, you saw before a plan which has been created in CD Engine and SketchUp, and now Devin has uh, imported it into the Unreal Engine. And here you see the Unreal Engine at work, basically. Or like you see here, on the top right, there's the outliner. So this is basically your scene uh, description with all your actors. And then here you have the detail inspector. Then you can go change things. And here you see, for example, so the the visual already here in this in this editor is 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 very very um, appealing. So. And uh, and by importing this and having having nice trees and having this these elements in there, you have this uh, yeah you, you have these very good uh, visuals. And then Devin pressed uh, play, <laughs> so means that means now you can actually really interactively explore your scene. And in this case, um, yeah, this is like a, with with a, with a, yeah first person uh, or third person kind of uh, navigation system. You can go and explore, explore your uh, your space. And you see the amazing level of detail uh, here, and and how how it's really immersive. Um, this uh, this experience then when you're on the PC, and yeah, we really try to have these things in in uh, in ArcGIS Pro and uh, and uh, and also on the web and with JavaScript. But uh, I think we will get there at some point. But uh, currently, these guys are still a bit uh, ahead. <coughs> so here is another example. So this is an example uh, built with Unity. And this is actually a very interesting uh, project. It's from the city of Zurich. Um, so here again, you see in City Engine um, a, a, a city 5,000 years ago. and the interesting part is that this has been an arc, uh, uh, so this is an open space in Zurich, and they, they, uh, some architectural, archi 
archaeologists <laughs> figured out that there was this kind of little city there, like at the very on, on this open space. So they modeled this city um, like really, really accurate, and then uh, and then that was really amazing. Like they gave you the uh, the Hololens, and then you could walk around in a one-to-one -one model of this of this. Uh, of these buildings which have been there 5,000 years ago, which was really, really amazing. And I was also surprised about the HoloLens, like you can w walk like, I don't know, like 30 meters and it was still very accurate. So uh, it was a really, really amazing experience and uh, yeah, it has been built with Unity. And, uh, and yeah, here, here you also see there's a, there's a VR version of it. So yeah, this is uh, again in the talk afterwards um, at four, we talk about uh, all this AR, VR stuff. So this question I get a lot. And uh, of course, it's very, very hard to answer. Um, so yeah, as you might know, these are the two game engines. Um, especially, of course, there are much more game engines than these two, but these two are basically the, the ones which, which uh, yeah, um, are, are mostly used. I think they cover like 90%, I would guess. And, uh, and here's a little, uh, basically, um, they are very much kind of similar regarding business model. So means as long as you, for internal use, especially for visualizations, um, for rendering, um, you don't, they are for free. Um, and uh, if, you, if you publish, um, if you actually cre really create executables and publish, distribute them, then I think it depends on the size of your business how much it costs, but in general, this stuff is free. Everybody can just download it and, and, and play with it for both of them. And uh, from a technology point of view, um, their Unreal is a bit ahead of, of Unity. So it means Unreal is famous for that many, many things come out of the box. So um, Unreal has, um, has a very good material editor um, since years, and Unity, I think, just now. Um, all, all these kind of things. However, on the other hand, um, Unity has a, has a bigger community with plugins, uh, so you get lots of lots of plugins and solutions um, um, where you can do stuff. But Unreal is more like uh, really um, more the out of the box package of, of Unreal is, is, is better. It's better suited for, for kind of really high, the high quality renderings. So this is why Unreal get, is actually very famous in the architectural visualization space. And uh, yeah. Then the development environment, from a development environment point of view. So Unity is on C Sharp and uh, Unreal is on C++. Um, accordingly, um, yeah, I think it's this kind of two developer types, um, yeah, which kind of, um, it's up to what kind of developers you have, what's, what's better suited. Um, one big thing is that the source code of Unreal is uh, freely available, so um, everybody can, can see the full source code and you can go and, and make fixes there and uh, it's, this is really cool. Um, then um, Unreal tries to have some good tools for, for um, DevOps um, and uh, etc. But in general, the DevOps stuff is not so good yet uh, for, for, uh, for game engines. So uh, yeah, integrating this stuff, for example, in Jenkins, or <laughs> still, still not fun. Um, Unity is, is, is very, very good um, regarding platform support. Um, they are very, very famous for if there is a piece of hardware, uh, Unity supports it. Probably your, your washing machine or whatever, it's like Unity works on it. It's crazy. <clears throat> they all both say they, um, they both claim to support browser. But uh, this stuff is kind of unstable and not so performant. Like you cannot add too much data in there. Um, yeah. 
Then uh, the adoption rate, um, Unity is, I think, um, adopted much wider. So, uh, so it's also Unity is more, more beginner friendly, as, as mentioned. Um, Unreal is used only in architectural visualization, I think, there where it's more used. And uh, one thing is Epic Games is actually was, was working on the enterprise business, I think, already since like two years. So they are really focusing on enterprises. And Unity now starts to actually take non-game stuff serious. Um, so Unreal has a bit of an advantage there. Unreal already has a product, which is Unreal Studio, uh, which is kind of for enterprises. At the moment, it's still for free. Um, yeah. So here is uh, my the the my conclusion. So I would like to emphasize this is my conclusion, not <laughs> not the ESRIs or something. Um, and I can I think it can change. But from a technology point of view, I think Unreal is better. Uh, but from a community point of view, um, Unity is better. Uh, you have more more people, more more little tools, etc. And uh, from a development environment point of view, I think it really depends on what kind of people uh, and developers you have in your in your company. So it means, uh, yeah, um, in general, I recommend that if you have a small kind of one one off uh, project, I would go for Unity. If you have like a, a thing where you have to build a really developer environment which you are going to reuse and reuse, then I recommend uh, Unreal. So. Now, uh, how do I bring uh, stuff from from uh, from CD Engine uh, into the game engine? Um, so first, Unity, and this is actually super simple. Um, <clears throat> so maybe first, uh, who has used CD Engine here? Okay, I see many. So. Um, so just a quick introduction, CD Engine. So tomorrow there's a, there's a bigger session on CD Engine. Um, but CD Engine is a 3D tool um, for, for creating urban plans, urban designs. And uh, it's, it's really good in importing uh, JS data and 3D data and then publishing, and publishing it out to, for example, ArcGIS Online or these game engines. And, uh, What's very, what's kind of famous on CD Engine is the procedural capabilities that you can, for example, you can change the shape of the buildings and uh, very easily and the, can move around streets, etc. And once you are finished with your model or you imported your model, um, then you can go and press here export models. And uh, if you do that, then you basically get the question. So here you see a few of the um, supported formats. Um, so they are. Um, so you can put it onto ArcGIS Online. These these models. So here's the scene layer package. So you can upload it and then have it online. But or, or Collada is supported. Or blah, blah. but for game engines, um, the format which is mostly used is uh, FBX from Autodesk. And uh, so this is really kind of the format for, for game engines. And when you export it, one thing is the terra, so the, the, the elevation data. So here we offer that, that you can actually export them as meshes. So bringing terra into the, into, the, into the game engine is actually a kind of a problem. Like you can import it as a mesh, so means just as, a, as, as triangles. However, then it's not like it's not an intelligent Terra. It doesn't know it is a Terra. It can think it's a teapot or whatever. <laughs> but uh, yeah. And uh, however, this is so complicated to bring these height maps and then actually really use the default Terra of game engines. It's kind of complicated. Um, but yeah, for now, um, what you can do is you can just export them as meshes. Then what's also important is that you create texture atlases. Um, this is because um, these game engines, they don't like to have many textures. So it means um, so-called draw calls and uh, every time they have to load a different texture, that's, they, don't, they don't like that. So it means they like having one big texture which, which includes kind of everything. And uh, then also, um, 
in the case of, of uh, Unity, it's important that you um, embed the textures. So it means the FBX actually has the textures. The FBX file actually has the textures inside. Also something to mention is FBX supports instancing. So instancing means um, if you have a tree and you have this tree thousand times, in FBX actually when you save it, um, then this tree is only in there once and then just a thousand times the, the position information, but the tree, the tree data only once. So this is also very, very important because then the game engine actually reads this instancing and uses this and, and saves a lot of time because they don't have to read all the data, all the thousand trees, they just have to read one tree and then just, just duplicate it. <clears throat> so, once you exported this, then it's actually it's really super simple. You have this FBX file. Um, you see it in your you you copy it into your asset folder. Then you drag it um, drag it into your scene, and that's it. Um, what we do is we kind of have the preview materials, so we try to set up all the materials for you and. Uh, and then, yeah, the only thing you have to do is basically place your camera then inside, inside this model, and uh, and then you can press play, and then this happens what you saw in in Devin's presentation. You are then inside the inside your 3D model, and you can navigate around. And uh, here you see, that's why I call it the preview material. So this is just the standard materials you define in CD Engine. However, like that, it, that this looks actually really, that this looks like photorealistic or like stylish or whatever style you wanna, wanna create, you need to work with the materials much more. But yeah, creating such a thing, if you have CD Engine, if you have your GIS data, it's really, really simple. So if you have, you can really download CD Engine um, um, in many, there's, in many um, EAs, CD Engine is included, and then, and then even, CD Engine basically has two things. One is, one is like, if you just want to use it as kind of to, as a, as a, as a 3D tool to convert and, 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 yeah, put, put 3D models together, then CD Engine is very easy to use. CD Engine is complicated to use when you want to create your own uh, procedural rules. So if you want to create your own building rules, etc. But for this, for just putting in data and exporting it, it's very simple. So it means if you have 3D GIS data, take CD Engine, put it in, and export it. Very simple, and then open it in Unity. So now, Unreal. Here, um, Again, you see CD Engine. So here, this is a this is another picture of CD Engine. So here you see the 3D model inside CD Engine with all the layers, etc. And here you have the inspector where you can actually navigate. So for Unreal, we actually have a special a special way to go. So what Unreal is 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 providing is the so-called DataSmith uh, format, and this is actually something very cool. They did something, and this is also what Revit is using. So every every professional 3D tool uh, is actually trying to use this interface to bring in the stuff into into Unreal, and uh, so it's very it's a very clever interface which actually allows you to 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 put in pretty cool 3D models in a good way. So here you see um, here you see a little um, um, yeah video um, where one of one of our guys is doing the typical like CD engine to Unreal workflow. So now he's exporting um, in DataSmith, opening it, loading it. I said it's a bit faster than. Uh, And, and here, and here, now you have the model inside inside Unreal, and already, like you see, like uh, it really looks 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 good. And then this is the typical thing which you do in, in a game engine, or like you put in, for example, some atmospheric scattering and uh, and all these things. And you see all the effects you have in a, in a game engine. So, for example, the depth of field, and then here again, the the movies, kind of the architectural visualization rendered out. And uh, and again, you can see it by at, at nighttime. 
Yeah. This is the um, the favela rule by um, Matthias Bühler, um, Bourbon, um, which is kind of a yeah a very interesting data set, which we actually will make available uh, for free very soon. So, one of the things I mentioned was materials, and uh, for the Unreal Engine, the Unreal Engine is very, is famous for having very very good materials. So it's actually the, the, the basically the de facto standard in computer graphics for material definition, and. Uh, so typically what you do is you get something in CD Engine, like in CD Engine, you, for example, you have defined uh, your grass and then there are some, 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 some basic material options there. And it kind of looks okay in CD Engine. However, then to make it actually really look, look very good, you have to um, then replace the material in, in, in a, uh, in the Unreal Engine is something which is um, actually really of high, high quality. And for example, um, Unreal Studio comes with um, so-called so substance materials. So substance materials are, this is a Adobe product. Um, and these are like, like really, really good materials, for example, for grass or for, for concrete and everything, like really, really good stuff. And yeah, you, you should use this stuff and you should not use the CD engine textures or like all the big productions, they they have their own like materials inside the game engine and not, they don't just use textures. So the other thing uh, to replace are, are this so-called foliage. So it means uh, here you see, for example, uh, all, the, all the vegetation so this is something which is very, very important uh, in urban planning is, is uh, especially these days, what they want is they want to have green stuff. They want to have uh, plants everywhere. And, uh, but plants are very, very hard to um, render in, uh, in, yeah, because there are many polygons. And uh, so what you see on the left side is our rules, which basically distribute plants. And what you see here are just locators of different types. So you see here the different colors. And then, uh, so in CD Engine, you see here the rule, which to, to, to distribute these guys. And then again, we have some kind of, um, we need to replace them, these this, this actors, with, um, with, um, yeah, with proper, whoa, with proper 3D models. So um, these 3D models, so for example here, like, um, like yeah, foliage, are actually then used as in the so-called foliage system, which as the name says, is for, it's typically for vegetation, but you can actually use it for everything. So these are foliage systems and game engines are actually the thing for, for if you have millions of things, use the foliage system like I don't know like like plants or 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 um, yeah whatever like um, windows or pillars everything you repeat a lot um, you use the foliage system and uh, what we have so currently we have this internally but we got asked to also provide this. So here we have kind of a tool internally where we have actually, so we create a kind of a custom interface where we actually can then uh, easily um, replace things uh, coming from CD Engine with some, with some assets. Also you can, for example, for Unreal and both Unity, they have, they have asset stores. So for 20 bucks, you can go buy a, a tree which looks perfect or, a, or um, a Ferris wheel or like whatever. Um, and you have all the IP permissions to, to use this in your, in your, in your um, visualization or your executable. Um, so all this stuff, these, these, these marketplaces are really, really good. And here you see now how it looks like. Here you see like these are, when this for a whole city or like, you see how many, how many, how how much geometry you have here, and uh, how much geometry you have to deal with, and this is all with, with by replacing uh, foliage, and uh, you see this kind of starts to become to look kind of photorealistic here, um, so this level of quality you can achieve is is pretty um, good. Um, then you cannot just replace things with, uh, um, yeah, not just materials and objects, you also can replace, 
replace these kind of markers with so-called blueprints in Unreal. So blueprints are like scripts. Um, and these are scripts which are with a visual programming language, so you can just put together a few nodes, basically, saying. So for example, here you see um, these animations you saw before, like the people walking around. Um, again, this has been a replacement, so we just, um, as another, we, we created basically like pathways in CD Engine and then replaced these with, uh, with these blueprints. So, so yeah. Then the next thing is the terrain. Um, I already mentioned that um, the bringing in the terrain is such a such a big problem. Um, and actually, what these what these game engines have is they have amazing terrain sculpting tools. So it means they there you can go in and uh, and create create plateaus and. Uh, and really model model your terrain. So this is what this is what game engines are. If you have ever played a game, like these games, they have amazing terrains to walk around and everything. Also, they have, for example, things like they can they can position a street and then the terrain adapts to the street and all these kind of things. Um, however, this is only possible on uh, on on the on their native terrain. So this is like their terrain system. And bringing in stuff, GIS data, into their terrain system is very, very difficult. So we have some workflows now um, where we describe how you can get uh, a height map from CD Engine and then put it into the Unreal Engine. And uh, we also are working with Unity on, on making it possible there. But uh, yeah, it's getting there. Also, like these providers, they both Unity and Unreal, they kind of realize uh, this need for like that there is actually real-world elevation data which you want to have in in your game engine. And what you see here is is uh, we imported for for this plan the actual Terra, and then you see what's possible in the in the in the editor. So they can go in and basically do these kind of things here, which are like really editing, like for example, making this little, uh, yeah, this little pond and, uh, and, and doing that kind of like, it's really game design now, um, which is amazing when you can use all these tools. Then, um, last but not least, what's actually a, um, I mentioned that already, the, the lighting. The lighting is really a problem. And uh, what you see here is uh, is when you when you especially when you have this daylight um, is a is a tool called True Sky. So this is one of these tools which is available for game engines. So uh, um, and let's play it again. So you so look at the sky. So this you get it out of the box. So you 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 have this tool. You just put your model in there, and it looks like that. <laughs> Um, so the sky and the lighting and everything, which is which is truly amazing. Um, you can create like even now with this more like schematic model, or it looks it looks it looks um, visually nice. But typically, this is this is a pretty big challenge. Is really kind of how do, how you light how how you light your your three D scene. So. So yeah, this was kind of like very, very quick introduction into game engines. So I think in general, um, it's uh, yeah, it's actually pretty straightforward how you bring in GIS data into into game engines. And I hope you understand a bit the advantages of using a game engine. Um, I just have a here kind of a very quick discussion on like like what are game engines about. So. The one thing which game engines don't have, they, are, they don't have georeferencing. So they don't know anything about coordinate system. So this is something where CD Engine is actually very good at. So CD Engine takes your coordinate system, which is like somewhere uh, with huge coordinates, and then moves it to, to the origin um, of a raw, raw coordinate system, of a non as a, just a standard Euler coordinate system, and then puts it to 3D, to the game engine. Because the game engines, they cannot handle these huge, large coordinates. Um, however, this is, as you can see here, I wrote um, no geofrencing yet. So we are in contact with both Unity and Unreal a lot. 
so they are friends with us, and uh, and uh, we know they all they all want to work on this. Um, then, as I mentioned, what really works is importing the GIS um, data into the editor. So here, why why do, do I say editor? So all I told you now was like this is like game engines. You have the editing part, and then you press play, and then. This is the this is the part where you actually then interactively um, inter inter interact with with your scene. However, this is only for the editor where you actually can can import data. But um, the Terra is still a problem. Then the whole level of detail handling is actually also something which is not so out of the box yet. So also, for example, how you how you actually really get out the best of the foliage system of the of the game engine so that the instancing works really good. It's actually all all pretty um, as yeah it's it's all not so simple yet. Um, but it works. And uh, and then also something which people sometimes think is that um, game engines are very good in scale. So you can put in as much data as you want and the stuff is always fast. This is not the case. Um, so it means Game engines, like if you actually play games, or they have levels, and typically when you go from one level to the other level, they um, the new level is loaded, or you cannot see from one level to the next level, or they repeat. They have tricks in games, so it means in GIS we cannot we cannot use these tricks. <laughs> we don't have a, a wall in between uh, in between two 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 elevation tiles or something. So uh, so yeah, this is like. The scale is is limited in in game engine still. It's really like if you have this kind of uh, if you have one data set for like I don't know like a few million polygons, then the game engine is good. But if you have an open world, this open world stuff is not yet out of the box. This is like you cannot stream in data, etc. Um, also, the, the other problem is like when you actually download when you put GIS data into into a game engine and then ship ship the executable with this with this GIS data, you might have permission problems because very often the GIS data comes with that you cannot redistribute redistribute the 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 data. So this is another problem you have there. So one thing I didn't talk about is and which many people also ask me is like when can I stream in 3D data from the web GIS? So it means what we do in the browser now is basically, yeah, we access um, I3S services or feature services or the elevation world service uh, or base map services on ArcGIS Online and can look at them in in um, in a game engine. And here, um, the answer is uh, again um, does not really work yet, <laughs> but uh, we are working on this. So. Um, again, we are in contact with Unity and Unreal, and uh, we have um, we have uh, two teams working on this. Um, and uh, again, come come to the session afterwards um, in on AR VR where we talk a bit more about this because there there are also the runtime guys. So it means on the one side we have the runtime team, which wants to create um, an an, uh, an an Unity plugin. Um, and uh, where you basically can access access these things. Then on the other hand, um, in Zurich, we are experimenting with the same thing with the Unity, uh, with the Unreal plugin. So we have these two teams working on this, and uh, with the idea then that we can, um, that basically that the runtime supports both engines at, at the very end. Because we get mo lots of questions for, for both engines, so um, we as Esri, we of course um, need to support both engines. So. so we don't need to make a call or something. And uh, so here, here you see this is work in progress. So this is the um, this is from this is the Unreal Engine. So and this is now at runtime. Um, so means this is this gets loaded in and. So what you see here now, this is the interactive. Um, so it means this is like screen capture of somebody um, actually uh, zooming in. And what you see is these shutters. Um, and this is why game engines really don't like when you load data. They really don't like that. Or like they, they, don't, they don't like progressive loading of data. And uh, 
so means this needs to be, um, yeah, you see this is work in progress, this will of course all be fixed. We know of partners who have this, this stuff running in both Unity and Unreal, um, however, for their specific use case. However, we try to make it, uh, yeah, in general. Something which, which already works is then, and this is again just kind of like as a test, um, you can also, rendering it out works already. So like actually, as I said before, like you, you, where, where you render as a, for 3D visualization. Uh, ignore the flickering, this is more like a debug thing for us to see where the tile gets replaced. But um, yeah, so this stuff already works. So, you, and you see here, this is like, these game engines are like, they have this kind of smooth 60 frames per second um, thing and then, and then when you have proper caching, then you have amazing experiences, of course, in, in like how you explore 3D content. And uh, here you see an I3S service. And of course, then we will cache this on the, on the disk, or well, like we, we cache stuff uh, in, in ArcGIS Pro, we of course cache stuff on the disk. And uh, in the web, we cannot cache so much, or like because the browsers have, have reduced thing, but for game engines, this will be um, pretty amazing also like from an experience point of view. And I think this is also kind of like the, the thing where, yeah, which I, which I think is one of the takeaways is I think that game engines will be, yeah, I think they will become uh, coordinate system aware and, uh, and the whole kind of connection to the, um, to the, to the WebGIS will happen and, uh, and yeah, we at Esri, of course, support this because this is a very, very interesting technology platform for us. And uh, yeah, so that was my presentation on game engines. <laughs> Thank you. So, are there questions? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. So the question was, what, what kind of um, engines do flight simulators use? Um, one, one I know is, uh, is of our partner, Prisakis, and uh, they, they've, they are kind of the hoster of the open flight format, which is used in many um, training simulation tools. Um, this is a very famous engine, I think Terra something is the name of the engine. Um, yeah, exactly. And uh, then there is also very, we all know of very, like Thales has its own, as a very good in-house engine. Uh, yeah, so there are many of these engines. But I also know that, for example, Bresagis looks at Unreal. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think so, yeah, but of course they, I guess they have some special things which, which work better there because they are specific. Um, however, yeah, they are, um, the, that they are looking to Unreal means, actually, I guess, it's very expensive to, 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 to maintain such a code base. Or, like we in Zurich, we, main, we, we, have the, we have the Globe Render Engine for the web. And, uh, and these are like uh, 25 people working on this. And uh, this is a lot of work and like you need to, it's a never ending thing or like you have to add like water, this is something we work on at the moment for example, or like everything, everything, everything in there. So it's, it's a never ending work on having such a render engine. Yeah. Other questions? Uh, so between Unity and Unreal, which engine is best in performance when it comes to taking like big data, like big dim data, like Revit models and higher building and everything? Mm -hmm. So the question was, uh, which engine is better for, for BIM data, like really big data sets? And uh, so what I know is that, so first I'm not like, a, um, I haven't played really a lot with BIM data and game engines. Um, but uh, what I know is that there's, I mentioned that there's this um, from Revit to Unreal, um, um, yeah workflow, which I think is, is pretty good. Um, for sure, for visual quality, Unreal is better um, regarding this. Um, for, for scale, I think there, there, are, there are, for GIS data, I saw actually some Unity things which are pretty impressive. 
Um, so we have partners who, who, are, who, who stream in data um, in a very impressive uh, manner. Um, yeah, the question is then like, yeah, when you when you need to make it look good, does it scale uh, from from that point of view? So it's a very hard, and I cannot really answer this question. Uh, this is why it's kind of a draw between the two. I think at the very end, I would take the one where you have better, where where the developers are good at the people you have in your company. I think this is the deciding factor. Yes. In the beginning, you showed us the round table. Mm -hmm. uh, Um, this is all based on, on the Unreal Engine, and uh, then um, for, for devices we use, um, uh, we support HEC Vive and the Oculus Rift now, new, and, uh, and then for the Sky, uh, it uses uh, this True Sky environment. So it's a VR solution? This is a VR solution only, yes. Yeah. It's a, uh, yeah, we talk about afterwards in the, in, in the talk. But it's really cool, like you can bring it in and it's kind of an out of the box thing, or like, this is really something. So in Unreal you can define kind of like wizards, import wizards, that's what we did. So you can bring in the data in, a, in an easy way um, and then just click, 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 click through and then you have your, your city plan in, in this VR experience. So because, Building such a VR, VR experience is, again, something you need a developer. It's not something you can just click. Um, however, if you have a template, then you can just click. Yes? Um, with your knowledge, if you, if you look back in time, the uh, CG engine five years ago was almost nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, I do see a kind of the disruption here where you say that the, two, the gaming industry Okay, the question is, uh, what is going to happen regarding um, game engines and, uh, and GIS? How, how do the two worlds uh, emerge? And uh, so this is just my personal opinion, of course. Um, so I think uh, for, for ESRI, this is uh, a new platform, but it's one of many. So we have the JavaScript platform, we have the, 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 the runtime, means Android iOS platform, we have the Pro platform, or like these are platforms for us. We support one more, that's the story for ESRI. ESRI is a base technology provider. Um, because at the end, the whole, like, the web GIS is still, will be hosted by ESRI. So what are the clients? It's basically, like, we support all of them. Um, and then what I think is the game engines um, will, so as I said, like, loading into data and streaming into data is still, like, this is not so, I think they are, like, two or three years uh, away, uh, like, still off. So think what you can do today with the JavaScript API is, is if our stuff uh, is much simpler and just works better. And this is just in the browser. Um, however, what I think is the game engines will, uh, for sure they will dominate the immersive computing. So means the, the um, everything, augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality. Um, this stuff will all be based on game engines. Um, there will all only be the, the, the phone-based augmented reality, I think, which is probably something where people build their own applications, um, where we actually have the ArcGIS runtime. But all the stuff on the headsets, where you need 60 frames per second, this is uh, game engines. So now the question is, what does, how does immersive computing become, uh, like how does it develop? Will it, is it just a hype or will it, Will it be the thing? Like, um, yeah, we talk afterwards about uh, the Hololens two and uh, all these things, but uh, in general, I think is 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 a new thing which comes up. And uh, one one thing to to um, to consider is that Epic Games, the developer of Unreal Engine, is unbelievably rich because of Fortnite. They are like they are they are. They make billions 
just with Fortnite. So it means, and this is also why why they 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 have the best people, or like they can everybody like everybody, all the good people get sucked in by them, and uh, and they are actually really cool. Like we worked with them since like years, and they are really really cool partners and uh, very very good. And they are they are good people, but uh, they are super rich. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah. <clears throat> Other question? Last one? Yes. Yeah, at the moment uh, we only have this import workflow over the over CD engine. This is kind of our only solution at the moment. For and otherwise, um, we work on with, uh, with the runtime team. We work with, on these plugins for for Unity and Unreal. Um, but this stuff is not yet available. So um, so no, there there are no SDKs API yet available for um, in for for Unreal or Unity. Yes. So can I use the The question is um can can I use the runtime SDK to um to to basically yeah load in things um into Unity and uh, yeah I guess so. Um but uh I think just just using the 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 authorization stuff of the re, of the RJS runtime would would be good because yeah uh, developing this by your own is 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 horrible, um, but yes um, come to the session afterwards and ask Adrian like he's 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 good in this stuff <laughs> he knows all the tricks. <laughs> okay. Um, so the question is like, are there any other in-browser solutions? And my answer is no. Use the JavaScript API <laughs> for Arjun. <laughs> no, uh, I don't know. Like we test the stuff every year once, and it still doesn't really work. And uh, because um, yeah, we, we have to look at it. Um, but yeah, um, I think they also don't care so much. I think they. I think these guys, Unity and Unreal, they want to replace the browser. They want. They don't want to be the in the browser. This is kind of my my conspiracy theory. <laughs> okay. Uh, so thanks very much uh, for coming and uh, and yeah. Uh,